G'day everyone and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue this series of going through each team in the AFL's best 22 three years from now, specifically round one of the 2027 season. So uh, the point of this, I suppose, is to forecast three years in the future and look at where clubs might be in terms of age profile, what, how good their best 22 is going to be from a positional point of view. Do they have depth in each position? Um, you know, What retirements are going to impact them? Of course, the limitation of this is that there's going to be trades and draft picks over the next three years. So the point of this is not to try and predict what's exactly going to happen. It's more so to point out uh, where clubs are at in in terms of their future projections as things currently stand. It'll kind of obviously indicate you know, what areas they need to recruit for and how vulnerable they are going to be to things like retirement. So today we're gonna to be talking about the GW West Football Club. Um, I have done every club in reverse alphabetical order from the Western Bulldogs to the Giants now. And uh, I did the same thing in a series recently where I talk about each club for 2024. So those two playlists exist on the channel. So there's one called team-based videos for 2024. And then there's this video series in a playlist that uh, is called AFL teams in three years. So if you wanna go binge that content, be my guest. And as always, I will ask if you don't mind uh, considering subscribing to the channel if AFL content is up your alley. Uh, we also do some cricket content during the off season, although we are primarily an AFL channel. So without further ado, let's get into talking about where GWS is likely to be three years from now. So how we always start this analysis is to work through what players are likely to be off the list due to retirement three years from now, round one of 2027. So uh, I've gone through and handpicked five here for the Giants, which was a little less than I expected. But I've gone with Callan Ward, who will be 36. Lockie Keefe will be 36. Nick Haynes will be 34. Adam Kennedy will be 34. Stephen Canelio as well will be 33, turning 34 that year. So I forecasted that those players will have retired by then, although, you know, I could be wrong. Someone like a Canelio in particular could play a little bit longer, but I decided to err on the side of... Um, getting new players into the into the 22. Retained veterans is the next section, which is players that are going to be on the list most likely who are going to be over 30. And I've actually been conservative with this and kept, kept some players in. So Toby Green will be 33, turning 34. I just feel like Toby Green is more likely to play deeper into his career, particularly given he's not a true on baller. He's more of a forward. Um, then, you know, someone like a Stephen Canelio. I've also uh, given Lockie Whitfield at 32 and Josh Kelly at 32. I've still kept them in this team uh, because this is probably going to be their final year, but I, I think they're slightly younger than Canelio. I've just kept them in for now. Jesse Hogan at 32 could be line ball. Could they unearth someone else as well to, to take his spot? I'm not too sure, but I've kept him in the video. Braden Pruce as well, only at 31 for a ruck. That's not too bad. And Harry Himmelberg will be 30 um, as of round one that year as well. So those guys are all in the team. With that all being said, let's talk about this best 22. So I'll get up on the screen now. And uh, as I will, I will explain in every single video what the colors and numbers mean, even if you've been watching the series uh, up to date. But uh, the colors, first of all, as we look at this best 24, which is uh, an expanded version of the 22 naturally, um, the green indicates the confidence I hold that they are still going to be best 22 in three years. So if they're green, I'm pretty confident. If, I'm yellow, if they're yellow, I'm not sure 100%. Um, so it's obviously just having a crack, but the numbers there indicate, well, the first number before the slash is their age of round one of 2027. And the second number is how many games experience I roughly forecast they'll have. As a general rule, if they're a best 22 player and likely to be for the next three years, I've given them plus 60 games, 20 games a year, allowing for injury, etc. If they're a project player or outside the best 22, I've scaled it back a little bit and um, you know given them slightly less. So again, it's just a rough forecast, but it kind of just helps us ascertain how mature and how experienced this team is likely to be in three years. So let's go through it line by line. Now the back line looks fairly settled there, as you can see. Sam Taylor is still, I mean, he's already a gun player, but at 27, he's going to be just in his prime then as a 27 year old. Jack Buckley as well, similar age, 28 uh, at this point. As a key back, this is kind of their prime years and they're already good key backs. So I have no, conf uh, no issue backing them in to still be there in three years. Connor Arden, we've seen some good signs from Isaac Cumming as well. And Lockie Ash, I think these are all pretty safe bets to be in the best. Uh, best six, so to speak, with Harry Hilmerberg sort of playing that third tall role still in three years. At 30, he might be the vulnerable one, but uh, I would still say that the back six still looks pretty much the same. Lockie Whitfield, because he's 32, is, uh, well, first for a start, I've got him in yellow because, you know, I'm not 100% sure he's still going to be there. But I've just pushed him out of the, that line, even though he could still easily be one of their best players in three years' time. I just pushed him on the bench to see what the rest of the team would look like. Uh, but he, he could still be a gun by then. 
So, the, yeah, as I said, the back six looks pretty settled. Uh, James Leake as well, I've chucked on the extended bench there. Um, again, I just a uh, player I have some confidence in. As a general rule, like if they're a project tall, I'd probably keep them in yellow. Yeah, but if that were a pretty damn good first round prospect and uh, I have a high opinion of them, then I've put them in green. But of course, anything could happen uh, with respect to James Leake and Phoenix Gothard. But let's talk about the midfields now. Uh, Harry Perriman will still uh, only be 28, still kind of in his prime. Expect him to still be in, the, uh, in and around the team for sure. Tom Green at 26 makes sense. Josh Kelly, again, only in yellow because at 32, he could be a little bit vulnerable, particularly as a, as a sort of hard-running midfielder there. Finn Callahan should be in his prime by then. So, you know, a duo of Callahan and Green already makes for a pretty strong midfield when you consider um, Josh Kelly still might be part of that team as well. Harry Rouston, I've got there as an on-baller. Again, is it fair to have him in yellow and James Leake in green? Probably not. There's going to be some inconsistencies with that. But Rouston, we've seen a little bit of an AFL level and he looks pretty decent. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure he's going to be, you know, first choice midfielder in three years. Again, might be inconsistent. Whatever. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, now, let's talk about the forward line after ascertaining that the back line is damn good. The midfield is decent. Uh, the forward line. Uh, now, there's a few locks in there. Aaron Cadman, just because he was pick one there, in three years' time, they're uh, still going to be giving him games, even if he's no good, although I expect him to be pretty good. So he's in there. Phoenix Gothard as well as um, as their first round pick this year. I expect him to still be in that 22. He could be in their 22 as early as next year. Brent Daniels is also a bit of an underrated gun at the comp. So he's I'm confident of him. Toby Green, like I said, he's only in yellow because of his age. He turns 34 that year. He should still easily be best 22 if he's playing. Uh, but again, if they're a pretty senior veteran, I've kept them in yellow. Jake Riccardi. And Jesse Hogan. Uh, Jesse Hogan is yellow because we've seen some good uh, form from him um, in recent times. I'm not so confident that he's still going to be playing to a high level at 32. I don't think he's earned that level of like locked inness, if that makes sense. That being said, at 32 for a key position player, he should still be playing, um, but he could have been replaced if they trade someone else in. Same thing with Ricardi. I think we've seen some good signs, but far from a sure thing. So I've put him in yellow. Either way, it's going to be a Cadman, Hogan, Riccardi mix, but I presume by then, as Cadman will be 23, he will be a bit more of a prominent force than he would be, you know, in 2024, as you'd expect. Then the bench is listed with a few players. Uh, um, well, it's actually a bit of a mixed bag. So James Leake, we know about. Callum Brown, their Irish recruit, he looks pretty good as well. Again, I'm not 100% sure on him being best six in their forward line, that is. Whitfield, I talked about, again, as a veteran. I've, I've kind of just sidelined him for the time being. Uh, but then there's a few other types. Colin, Xavier O'Halloran, I thought, had some a good form towards the back end of 2023. I'd expect him to be there, but I'm not 100% sold just yet. Connor Stone and Darcy Jones are former first-round draft picks. That could be very good. But again, we just haven't seen much of. Connor Stone's played less than 10 games. Darcy Jones, I think, did an ACL in his debut season. Hasn't played a game yet, but should still be around the mix. There's players that they clearly rate. Uh, both, you know, Connor Stone's probably a forward mid or a midfielder forward. Darcy Jones kind of a wingman forward as well. So uh, a little bit of an unknown there. But let's talk about the players that didn't quite make the cut for me. And that includes a few names, some well-known, some not. Max Krasuski, again, I just don't know how to project exactly where he's going to be. Could he be there instead of Riccardi? Like, is Krasuski going to develop as a forward? A uh, bit of an undersized key, maybe. I don't know. As a key back, it's going to be hard to get in that team. So I have him just out of there. And then um, Lee Kalir as well, a bit of an unknown. And, you know, drafted as a mature age player, hasn't really played a lot of footy yet. Um, I don't see him forcing his way in over guys like Taylor and Buckley, even though he's a first-round draft pick. So that one's a bit of a, a mystery to me. Uh, Braden Proust, if he's still around, is still going to be back up to Briggs. I expect Briggs will be the first choice one. Um, and then there's a few other types like Harvey Thomas, Nick Madden that I just don't know a lot about. I know who Cooper Hamilton is purely because of the um, you know, the social media stuff he does. But again, he's only played a handful of games. So we, he's a wait and see. Toby Bedford was probably one of the unlucky ones to not make this team. I just think particularly with the... Uh, Phoenix Goddard recruitment as a small to medium forward. I just think he was probably the next best one after this team, but didn't quite make it. Ryan Angwin has played a little bit of footy for him, uh, but again, I'm just not uh, not confident enough to put him in this team. Could he be there instead of Connor Stone? He's probably done more at AFL level, probably. Um, and then, you know, someone like a James Peatling was probably also unlucky as a forward. Probably also still going to be in contention for this 24 or so. Josh Faye was another one I think could 
could make it. And, you know, if someone like a Whitfield has retired, hypothetically, in this scenario, we might see Josh Fay as the next one to backfill. And then Joe, Joe Font is someone they just drafted. So a little bit of an unknown. But that is my take on their best 24. I still think that team is pretty strong. Uh, it's, it is, does rely on some, some real guns who will be at the back end of their career. So I do feel like by this point... It, this team would need Josh Kelly and Toby Green to still be damn good players. Same thing with Whitfield to, to really compete, particularly in that midfield. Green and Callahan are potential to be guns, particularly Tom Green. Uh, that being said, they probably need a genuine on-baller in there to, to sort of help spread the load, so to speak. But the backline is strong as hell. Like That is a good backline right now, let alone in three years when these players are even more experienced and developed, and I don't think they're going to lose too much in the way of retirements for there. So... Anyway, guys, that is my take on the GWS team in three years. I think this will probably be the back end of their window because after this, immediately after this, we'll see probably the end of Kelly Green and guys like even Jesse Hogan, potentially Whitfield as well, um, and it will be a very new look team. So facilitating that transition, maybe getting some midfielders in in particular is probably where I'd look next. But overall, they're not in bad shape at all and uh, certainly could pinch a flag in the next three years because we saw you know, how good they were towards the back end of 2023. And the fact that they nearly beat Collingwood in the prelim speaks volumes. So they'll be an interesting one to watch. But as always, I look forward to your input. Let me know what you think of this 24 and fill in any gaps that I might have missed. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching the channel. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.